So why exactly is Spider-Man going to be set outside the MCU? Obviously there's contractual reasons, but the obvious one is very evident if you just look at Sony, if you look at what they're doing, and if you look at why Tom Holland is going to keep being Spider-Man in their universe and how they're going to handle that. And as always, before we get into this video, thank you guys for watching. And if you don't mind, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. So Spider-Man's world alone consists of 900 plus characters that Sony owns. And they said they're gonna be mining these for various characters to develop into solo projects, such as Morbius and Venom and other things they have in development like Jackpot, Craven the Hunter, and who knows what else. Black Cat, Silver Sable, maybe still, I don't know. Night Watch. But yeah, that's an interesting one, right? Um, they took Spider-Man away, and a lot of people are looking at it like, why would they do this, and what's their goal with it? And I think the goal is very apparent and evident the moment you look at the situation, and that's to get Spider-Man, one that's very familiar, that's played by Tom Holland, as quick as possible into the Venomverse. As we've covered before, Sony cannot use any element of the MCU. So they have to build a fresh new world for Peter Parker. Now, what's the likelihood that the next Spider-Man film is gonna feature Tom Holland and be a complete reboot of the character that tells you his origin again in him in high school? That's not likely, right? It's not gonna happen. So then you start forward thinking. They already have Venom established. He left New York. He's in San Francisco. Spider-Man is a New York-based character. They already alluded to the Daily Bugle and Eddie's previous jobs. Spidey already can have existed, or maybe he's somebody that's new in New York that's doing his thing. So the main reason, other than the contractual issues of why Spider-Man has to be set outside the MCU, is due to the fact that they're gonna throw him into the Venomverse. And when you think about that, that within itself is gonna print money. If you guys remember, they started developing a Venom film prior to the release of Spider-Man 3. It took them almost a decade to put a solo Venom out there. It finally came out and it did good in box office. The reviews weren't there, but that doesn't matter. It's the box office that counts, right? So they're looking at this going, well, we can strengthen the sequels and this universe if we officially toss Spider-Man in there. And that's their exact plan, toss Spider-Man in there and hope for the best. Now, whether that's gonna be the best and what it delivers, I don't know. Many of us don't until we see the final result, but you have to understand that this is just Hollywood mentality. It's Hollywood business, you know? You can sit here and complain about it all day. You can blame one studio or the other. Certainly people have, but at the end of the day, it's about business, it's about making the best choices. And the best choice they have is Spider-Man is set outside the MCU, because he has to be, and he's going over to fight Venom. Now, what they do about this and how they're gonna sell this and explain it to fans, that's gonna be the interesting hard one. And I'm not gonna believe that Disney's happy about this. 